Thanks for joining us on America Tonight. I'm Joey Chen. Our report begins with a nightmare scenario so bizarre it seems impossible that something like this could happen in America. Vulnerable people, especially the elderly, destroyed by a system that is supposedly designed to protect them. More remarkable than anything is how the state plays a role in essentially robbing people of their assets at a time when they most need them. At issue here is what's called guardianship and the people in charge of the wards of the state. America Tonight's Sheila McVicker brings us a tragic story that began with a knock at the door. Just like that, my whole life was shattered. With that knock, Rudy and Rennie North were about to embark on a 22-month ordeal, one which would deprive them of freedom. She never said it was anything other than we have three choices. One, I can call the police. Two, I can put you in a psychiatric ward. Three, you can go to a assisted living facility. The woman at the door was April Parks, appointed by a judge in Las Vegas to serve as a Norse private guardian. Unknown to the Norse or their family, a doctor and a physician's assistant providing some in-home care had declared the couple unable to care for themselves. Then, a judge who never met the couple, never ordered another assessment, signed off on Park's petition to serve as their guardian. I elected to take the third option. Going to assisted living. Assisted living because it sounded better certainly than jail or a psychiatric ward. Told it was just temporary, Rudy North says, for two or three weeks, the couple wound up here, Lakeview Terrace Assisted Living in Boulder City, Nevada, outside of Las Vegas. Sure, there was some sort of mix-up, confident they'd be back home in no time. I felt this would just blow over. I didn't have any idea what was going on, none whatsoever. What was going on, what has been going on for years across Clark County, home to Las Vegas and surrounding communities, elderly people declared incompetent, thrown into guardianship, their lives and their finances now controlled by a court-appointed guardian. More than 8,700 Nevadans are now in guardianship, the result of lobbying and laws passed around 2005 that were supposed to help people unable to care for themselves, but are now being used by some to prey on them. I thought this was so absurd, so stupid, that there is no way this could be true. Dan Roberts is publisher of The Vegas Voice, a monthly newspaper catering to seniors. He and his partner, reporter Rana Goodman, have spent months digging into guardianship. It is a racket. It's been going on for years. It is grab as much money as you can from these people. This is a multi-million dollar business in which everyone's getting a piece of it. The lawyers are getting a piece of it. The private guardians are grabbing a piece of it. The uh, people who do the estates, do estate sales, they're grabbing some. Nobody, Nobody called you? Nobody phoned me, no, no notification by mail, nothing. No. Julie Belshi is the Norse only surviving child. She also lives in Las Vegas. She says she had no idea what happened to her parents. They had just disappeared. Nobody's answering their phone. I didn't know what happened, I panicked. Belshi found a note on her parents' door. In case of emergency, call April Parks. I phoned April Parks and she phoned me back about a day or so later and um, was very nice. Um, very matter of fact, yes, I have your parents and um, I was outraged. I said, don't you know this is the United States of America that people have their civil and constitutional rights? What are you doing? If you're wondering why authorities didn't simply contact Belshi, the Norse daughter, if they were worried about the couple, you can find the answer in the court paperwork filed by April Parks. Exhibit 1, written by the same physician's assistant who declared Rennie North unable to care for herself. Quote, 
The daughter is unable to provide adequate care for the patient due to drug dependency issues of her own. The exhibit offers no evidence to back up this claim. They do that with everybody. So if it wasn't I was a drug addict, I'd be a gambler. I'd be um, exploiting them for their money. It's always something against a family member. We're all pieces of garbage, and they all come out smelling like roses. Almost immediately, Belshi objected to Parks as a parent's guardian. You have to file a lot of papers, a lot of legal documents, a lot of going down to the family court and filing objections and petitions. Fees for the attorney fighting to keep Parks as guardian? They came out of Rudy and Rennie North's guardian-controlled bank account. At the assisted living facility, Rudy Norris says he asked April Parks what would happen to the couple's possessions. She said, don't worry, they're going to be held in safekeeping. Eight other wards of April Parks were living at the same assisted living facility, Norris says. And they told a very different story. And what did these people say to you? These people They were also said wards. to me that they're going to sell them. Don't listen to her. All of the Norse possessions were sold at an estate sale. A lifetime's worth of antiques, art, furniture, even their clothes, sold, Rudy Norse says, for pennies on the dollar. So when the guardian comes in, the guardian then has the right to sell your parents' belongings in order to do what? To take care of them in their best interest, which is a bunch of bullshit. Nothing's done in the ward's best interest. It's only done in the guardian's best interest. What did you think? I said, I can't believe this. We're going to court. And she said, you can't go to court because you don't have any money. You can't afford a lawyer. When the Norths became Parks wards, they had money, lots of it. Where did it go? In the first year alone, court documents show April Parks billed Rennie and Rudy North a total of more than $20,000, paid out of the North's own bank accounts. A monthly trip to the bank, $60 each. Opening mail, $130 each. Every month, the bills added up. A 15-minute call from the ward about money. That call cost the Norths $20. Rudy and Rennie North were just two of April Park's wards. Court records given to America Tonight listed 155 wards under April Park's. She was billing all of them every month. One was Elizabeth Indig's mother. My mom had fallen down the driveway and she was rushed to the hospital. She was getting better to the point where they moved her into a rehab facility. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue one day, I get a phone call from this woman named April Parks. And what did she say? Oh, my God. She was very angry. She said, I'm an, my name is April Parks. I'm an officer of the court. The state has given me guardianship over your mother. I'm coming to your house to get the keys to your mother's house. Control of the house, the bank accounts, and everything. All of Indig's mother's possessions, too, were sold. I sent in some friends to see what was going on, and the friends reported back to me that they were auctioning off her clothes, even a bra that still had a price tag on it, her nightgowns, her shoes. She, the, my mom is not dead. You're auctioning off all her clothes? Really? It just seems to me they just come in and use the ward like their personal ATM. It's unbelievable. It's all about money, and they are making huge money. Indig's mother lived in this house in a gated community outside of Las Vegas. Indig says Parks failed to pay the homeowners association dues, and the home went into foreclosure. Purchased for $320,000, the home sold at auction for $22,000. Indig says when she complained, Parks cut off visits to her mother. She said, sorry, you can't visit her. So that, I, I begged, I pleaded, but nothing was working. I just think she was demonstrating that she did have the power. 
not to let me see my mom and that I'd better toe the line. Our calls and emails to April Parks and her attorney went unanswered. We also left messages for John Reyes, the physician's assistant who declared Rennie North unable to care for herself. 22 months after Parks took Give control the of the Norse, their bank accounts drained, car and belongings sold, Parks John. finally withdrew her objection to Julie Belshi taking over the care of her parents. She didn't object because she already went through all their money. They leave them without anything. They're destitute. I thought I had enough monies to last me forever. And now? Now I have nothing. Nothing. Belshi and her parents are now in court asking for some sort of restitution for their ordeal. The Norse have no place to go and now no money for their own home and so they live with Belshi and her family. A civil trial is scheduled in April against Parks, who also faces a police investigation. And the Chief Justice of Nevada's Supreme Court has convened a commission to reform guardianship in the state. The money's gone before you even knew what hit you. You never knew what hit you until you get that knock on the door and say, come with me. Sheila McVicker, Al Jazeera, Las Vegas, Nevada. Next here, we turn from exploitation of the elderly to the search for help. Who's best equipped to serve seniors? Later, his sacrifice and his suffering. A man who stood willing to give all for his country and how he was left with nothing. And hot on America Tonight's website now, Style and the Veil. Can two Muslim women find their footing in modern fashion at aljazeera.com slash America Tonight.